just women are in danger, but all marginalized people. We're being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort, that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election, but good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, Boston Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the people history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history. What body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalic. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. Friday Java. On the 31st of May 2019, the last program for the month of May, as we move merrily, merrily along here. A uh, programming note, a couple of programming notes. We'll have a numbers man, that's our macroeconomics program. It'll be this weekend as normal. We'll have an open source report that we almost finished. I had some traveling days uh, last week and uh, some minor surgery, so we got through all of that. And thus, uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, the week that was, that'll be on this normal date. And the Monday morning, the quarterback on the Boston Red part. Uh, this week in economics is on the numbers man part and on the open source, that's technical uh, part of our uh, family here at WBRN Radio on the Boston Red Network. Make sure we get that in. And we have the people from the University of Virginia, that's at Charlottesville. We always honor the uh, life of Heber Heyer, who was murdered by white supremacists in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. We always come in uh, with Friday Java with some uh, notes from uh, the Women's March. That was right after the, uh, before the inaugural, actually after it was on a Saturday, a Saturday before uh, old DJ Trump uh, became uh, president. Nonetheless, uh, Madonna uh, introduces it there, and that has been our standard. We will uh, depart here with uh, some words uh, from the late uh, Leon Redbone. He passed today. Leon Redbone was 127 (laughs) years old, as he said. He was actually, I believe, about 70 years old. Uh, An interesting entertainer. We'll go out with him. And uh, some other little things we need to catch up with it. A story here in the uh, Globe. Andrea Merkel delivered the graduation at uh, at Harvard, and she did not have any flattering things to say about one uh, DJ uh, Trump. Uh, period. We'll leave it at that one. And let's go to a couple of other things. We'll get out of the way here before we go to the University of Virginia. 
and uh, we'll also do a little bit of looking at uh, the poles here uh, sort of a controversy controversy excuse me with uh, Mark Zuckerberg's his uh, personal security chiefs accused of uh, sexual harassment making racist remarks about his wife uh, Priscilla Chang and by two former uh, staff uh, members this is from the Business Insider Zuckerberg's uh, head of uh, security has uh, been accused of sexual harassment making racist homophobic uh, comments by two former members of the uh, Facebook CEO of private stuff or general stuff or what do you want to call it the, uh, they have uh, learned that one account is a former employee of the uh, 34-year-old B&S household staff uh, who was responsible for preparing Zuckerberg's various homes uh, for the family's arrival. The other is a former executive assistant to uh, Linum uh, Boof. That was the uh, s uh, security chief. B uh, Boof had, re oh, excuse me, both had retained the uh, California law firm Lisa Bloom. Lisa Bloom is the dollar, daughter of uh, Gloria Allright, who's uh, on behalf of uh, Bill Riley's accused him 217, helped to get him booted off of Fox News, a letter which uh, Bloom uh, sent uh, to a uh, law firm requesting uh, the uh, companies uh, provide uh, security and support to, for uh, Zuckerberg's family layout an itinerary of, uh, of allegations against uh, Booth, a former uh, Secret Service agent. And what is more troubling about these comments, old Booth was actually a uh, Secret Service agent uh, protecting the family of, of uh, President Barack Obama. Also in this mix is a guy named Bryant uh, Mustler. Uh, he was the, man the managing director of his private office. He's a former special assistant to uh, President Barack Obama which name uh, floats in here twice. Uh, let's see if we can get the rest of this uh, down here. Zuckerberg has an empire outside of uh, Facebook as they lay it out here. We put this on Facebook uh, so you can get it from the uh, Business Inquirer. And let's see, Laura... Uh, uh, Laura... McLean uh, here, uh, uh, excuse me, McLean, uh, but requesting some, well, anyway, we don't get into this, it's too sorted, uh, period, according to the letter, he was placed, uh, and I'm assuming, uh, obus behavior, and reached out to Priscilla uh, Chang, this is, this person also reached out to this uh, Brian uh, Mustler uh, multiple times about Booth's behavior, and uh, reached out to Priscilla Chang to expose her uh, uh, to her the dangers and unlawful conduct that was taking place in her family's enterprise. But nothing was done. According to the letter, he was uh, placed, I guess, Boot was placed on medical leave off of the uh, severance package on the 22nd of February. The letter demands compensation for lost wages and damages for emotional stress. One source close to the matter told the business insider that Booth's conduct had previously been investigated by the Human Resources Department at, uh, I couldn't, uh, Capital, that's a wealth management and investment firm that established and manages a sprawling web of entities that manage the uh, Zuckerberg household. Anyway, it's a long article here about the various transgressions of this character. It's in the uh, security business. Uh, and this particular firm that uh, uh, in this uh, does uh, a list of uh, Silicon Valley uh, figures, Jack Dorsey, uh, Sandberg, uh, Ryan Hoffman, that's according to Forbes. Forbes also described uh, the uh, iconic uh, founder, uh, Debbish uh, Macon, uh, anyway, the concierge to Silicon Valley's uh, brightest uh, BNES. Oh, well. And let's see who else is here. This guy is in for a world of, uh, of hurt here, this boop. Uh, 
character uh, trying to get to where his resume was uh, and uh, online here uh, about what he had uh, done in the uh, aggregate. Yeah, here is right here. Uh, no, this is, uh, excuse me. Uh, this is, that's uh, Musler uh, there. And it's $20 million is spent on Zuckerberg's uh, personal security and travel. Quite an operation there within itself uh, that's exhibited here. And that's the reason we brought this out. Said he'd previously worked for the uh, Secret Service between uh, 2001 and 2017. That had been 16 years, including a five year stint working uh, to supervise the fiscal uh, protection uh, for the President and the First Lady of the United States during the Obama administration. That's according to a uh, LinkedIn uh, profile that he uh, put out. I don't know if we can get that up or not. Of this uh, character um, by going to uh, LinkedIn. Uh, security officer, Bay Area. Uh, and it just basically says that I'm an innovative security professional with over 25 years of achievement and experience in a corporate uh, security for state, local, and federal law enforcement, security operations, intelligence briefing, analysis, critical uh, infrastructure, protection, threat assessment, and uh, more. And it says that he's Chief Security Officer for Chang Zuckerberg Initiative from October 2017 to present, one year and eight months. He'll be soon going, there's no doubt about that. And he also does, uh, I suppose, regular. And some of his interests here, White House alumni, Secret Service, I guess he went to James Madison University. So much for James Madison University. Anyway, that that is uh, the end of that particular article. And later we'll have something here. We have time where Democrats and Republicans live. We picked this up over at uh, Cranston Analytics. Uh, it's something from our friends at the 538. Uh, Republican Democrats uh, tend not to live side by side even when uh, they live in the same city. And we'll we'll look at that. We have time. Otherwise, it'll be relegated to the week that was. Nonetheless, on to the University of Virginia at uh, Charlottesville. We'll be talking this time. Oh, there's one more thing we did. Oh, no, we did. We got that. Sorry about that. Ah, now we'll get to them. This is uh, from the uh, Crystal Ball. That's Larry Sabato, Sabato's shop. The managing editor there, Kyle Klondick. And the title here is House 2020. Incumbents uh, hardly ever lose a prime minister. The late Dred Jerry Pippen used to talk about this. Uh, Congress having very low ratings, but at the same time, most of the people in Congress are re-elected, regardless of either party. Incumbent House members, and this is the important points here, uh, hardly ever lose a prime minister in the past uh, since World War II, and more than 98% of House members who have run for re-election have been renominated by their own parties. However, even such a uh, lofty uh, renomination rate suggests that a few House members will lose their primaries next year, and uh, high victory rates for incumbents in uh, primaries doesn't necessarily take into account some members who may have uh, retired in the face of possible primary challengers. No doubt, there are several incumbent House members who uh, should take seriously the threat of a, uh, a primary in 2020, as uh, now it appears that there are more uh, primary action on Democratic side than on Republican side. That's to be expected, an incumbent primary of frets a week before Representative Crawley. That's the person uh, that uh, was defeated by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. One could necessarily blame O'Corley and his team for not fully recognizing the threat that Ocasio-Cortez uh, posed. After all, all primary upsetting House members uh, fail. Almost all of them. Yeah, well, yeah. The history might give us some uh, comfort to House members on both sides of the aisle who uh, have... Uh, 
deviated from uh, the party's off holidays, uh, off orthodoxy, excuse me, and uh, face a uh, primary opposition next year. Most notably, uh, Justin Amish. He's in Michigan. He's the man that uh, denounced and called uh, for the removal of one DJ Trump supporting impeaching of Trump. And there's a representative in Louisiana, uh, Representative Dan uh, Lipsky, uh, Lipsky uh, who's a social uh, conservative, uh, nearly leads uh, conservatism uh, to his uh, defeat in 2018. 2018, of course, was an off-year election and a little bit different situation. History also suggests that at least a few primary challenges will succeed of this uh, cycle. Let's look at a little bit. We won't look at all these years, but they lay it out here from 1946. Our contention is when we go back to 1946 and before the uh, Voting Rights Acts in the modern civil rights era, in a mini election, uh, it was a totally different situation. Anyway, in 1946, 46, uh, 398 uh, people won re-election. Uh, Loss renomination was 18, and it was a 95% uh, time. 48 was 96%. People that lost renomination was 15. 1950, 400 uh, out there, only six. That well, was 99% in 1950, 1952. That was uh, Harry S. Truman was president in 1952. I like I came in nine people were not renominated. That was ninety nine percent there. So we see that throughout the fifties it was in the high nineties, ninety nine, ninety eight percent. Nineteen sixty, four hundred and five uh, renominated, five uh, loss out, that was still ninety nine. Uh, nineteen uh, sixty uh, two. Nineteen sixty was an election year, nineteen sixty two JFK was in the White House. Only twelve uh, loss out as we'll call it, it was ninety seven percent. 1964 election year, LBJ running against the uh, right wing uh, Barry Goldwater. Only eight uh, lost out and uh, 98% there. Two, 1968, uh, four uh, were not renominated, 99% there. 1970, 98% there. 1972, uh, uh, Dr. George McGovern was running president, 11 uh, were not renominated, 97%. So you can see the trend here. We go down to 1976. Jimmy Carter was running. Only three uh, were not renominated that year. 384 uh, renominated. 1980, uh, we saw the introduction of uh, Ronald Reagan. Only six, 98% there. And in 82, that would have been the the off-year off election involving uh, Reagan. 97 percent, 84 only three uh, was 10 was not renominated. 84 only three, and the same for 86, 88 only one. That was uh, George H. W. Bush. 100 percent there, 100 percent in uh, 88, 100 percent in 1990. That was under uh, George H. W. Bush. Only one there. 1992, the election of uh, Wild Bill Clinton, the 19 uh, were not renominated, 95% there. 94, 99% is back to the same old situation. 1996, Bill Clinton was running for re-election. Only two uh, representatives were not renominated. It was 92% there. 2000, that was the election that uh, G.W. Bush stole from Al Gore of Tennessee. 99%, only three uh, in uh, 2002, 8, and 2004, 2. The re-election of G.W. Bush. And it was 100% there. So if we go to the rolling average of uh, 14,684 and the total uh, picture there, only 237 were not renominated. And that would be an 89%. That was number seeking re-election. They lost the renomination. This is in the House of Representatives. The uh, 98% uh, renomination uh, figure may actually understate the safety of incumbents in primaries, at least in this election. The reason is 2020 is not a national redistricting cycle, while it is possible that some states will have new uh, maps out there. Reapportionment years and naturally lead to more uh, primary turnover in the House. Incumbents of the same party, of course, they're placed in 
sometimes in districts uh, to run against uh, one another. GOP withdrew, uh, drew uh, maps that uh, some, uh, while uh, liberal parts of upper uh, west side of in Manhattan were added to congressional districts uh, centered on a more heavy African-American Harlem. This helped, of course, Charlie Rangel. we we'll never forget Charlie Rangel. The man that uh, won an election against our own uh, Adam Clayton Powell in the Democratic uh, primary that he started out his uh, career. The House had refused to seat uh, Congressman Powell in uh, 1967, but the Supreme Court overturned that. Powell won re-election in uh, 1968. He was uh, uh, Chairman Powell of the House Education Committee town at the time. Very, very powerful person. And uh, Charlie Rangel uh, won the election against uh, Congressman Powell in 1970. On the other hand, imposing 98% uh, renomination figure overstates how easy it would be to take out an incumbent. Well, that was a little different situation there. For all the ease, uh, for uh, all of the ease in which House members are renominated and receive historically, therefore, is actually a lot of turnover in the house from year to year. A note there of the on the average of three hundred and ninety seven house members seek re election every uh numbered a year. The house has uh, four hundred and thirty five members, meaning that on the average of uh, thirty eight of those members do not uh feature a uh, races do not feature an incumbent running for re election each cycle, which is about nine percent of the body's uh, total uh, membership. Some of these uh, members are not a lot, but some uh, may not may have uh, retired, at least in part because of primary challenges. That's no doubt right there. And they mentioned uh, Charlie Rangel. Charlie Rangel, uh, Rangel ran in, uh, what is it, uh, New York 13. That was in 2012 and 2014. And he had some legal problems that he were made up. Uh, that was in uh, 210. Charlie was a chairman of a very important uh, committee in the House and was forced to step down to a dirty uh, politics situation there. And uh, let's see, uh, he did not run uh, for re-election. He retired in uh, 2016. As far as I know, Charlie is still out and about. And a Korean a veteran. Now let's see what else we can pull out of this. Oh, in 2014, Eric Canna, we won't forget him, is Virginia 7. He was uh, defeated by somebody named De- Dale uh, Brett. Four years later, uh, Conway, the number four, uh, that was who uh, uh, Alexander Ocasio took out. Both men might have been a speaker, but not f- for their uh, defeats. Cantor uh, uh, almost assumed... Assumingly would have been uh, perhaps as soon as 2014 election. He would have been the speaker. He was a majority leader. Uh, oh, Amish, uh, or Amash, how they want to pronounce it, a libertarian Republican who holds uh, the Grand Rapids uh, seat. That's who he runs out of. That was held by uh, Noah Van Jail Ford. There's nothing uh, new to him. And let's see who else they seek here. Uh, Chris Collins, he's in New York 27. Duncan Hunter in California 15, both of whom are under indictment accusation of corruption. Steve King, he's out of Iowa Iowa uh, 4, who raised his comments. Uh, but they took him off of some committees, but he's still there. There appears, uh, appears to be more Democrats who face uh, primary opposition. It may be that Democrats are beginning to experience some of the primary stakes that emerged on the uh, Republican side? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, Lipsky of the House of the Social Conservative uh, Chicagoland Democrat uh, noted above only barely uh, beat a marketing consultant, uh, let's see, Marie Newman. That was in 18. Newman is running again, and uh, the brewing of primary has already made uh, national news. Sherry uh, Botos, uh, 17, the chairwoman, she's a Democratic uh, Congressional Committee. 
uh, was uh, going to hold a fundraiser for a fellow a Democrat, uh, oh, Lipsky, but uh, the, opti- the optic, excuse me, of the uh, head of DNC acting uh, is uh, back in the anti-abortion person didn't look too good for her. She is a moderate, and it's unfortunate we supported her in the past, would never support her again. Some other House Democrats who are not uh, particularly liberal, like uh, Jim Acosta, that's out in California, Stephen Lynch, that's in our Commonwealth uh, 8, and Henry uh, Cisnera, that's a Democrat in Texas 28, seem to face their primary opponents. Uh, although, but rather a two year system in all candidates uh, compete. Uh, California, oh, okay, technically doesn't have a primary, that's true. Uh, rather than a two party primary in which candidates compete, they have more of a uh, single first round, sort of like Louisiana. They call Louisiana's a jungle primary. Anyway, any discussion of Democratic primary challenge in 2020 uh, must include a New York City area. Uh, scene of uh, Alexander Ocasio's uh, insurrection in 18, while Ocasio was the only uh, primary challenger there. Um, Carol uh, uh, Maloney, I remember her, was held under a 60% of the vote. And uh, Sean uh, Gomacher, uh, Gomacher, excuse me, uh, of the uh, Times surveyed the primary seen early this year and found uh, that they and many other uh, New York Democrats could uh, will or face the primary challenges. No doubt about that one. Uh, senior members, that's uh, Gerald and Nadler, uh, uh, Jerry Nadler, and Elliot Eagle, uh, Engel, excuse me, Engel, and uh, Greg uh, Meeks, as well as uh, the newer members, uh, rep- Representative Susie Kathleen Rice, to the extent that a credible uh, primary uh, develop against one of all of them. The left-wing group that uh, counts uh, Alexandria Ocasio, one of their success stories, Alexandria Ocasio herself, fundraised off of the uh, possible... Uh, Facing a primary challenge, it is possible that two of her first-term allies, um, no doubt about it, Ihan Omar in Minnesota and Rashia Talibi uh, out in uh, Michigan, that would be Michigan first, uh, could be a primary challenge, no doubt about that, by reactionary uh, groups. And let me see who else here. Talibi uh, merits of watching, uh, given that uh, she is a Muslim of Palestinian descent who represents the majority African-American district that was represented uh, by our own uh, for uh, many, many uh, years there. Narrowly won her initial primary victory in 218. That was because the forces were uh, split up. That was uh, Congressman uh, Kanye's. But she's doing the business there, so I believe she'll be uh, retained. Uh, let's see. Diana uh, DeGetti, I suppose. Uh, long-serving Democratic representative. Uh, attached a strong uh, primary opponent. A former uh, House uh, Speaker uh, here. Uh, Cecilia uh, Duran. Who seems to be arguing for a, excuse me, angling for a Senate bid? Well, it's a little different situation there. And let me see who else we got here. Duran may uh, push their uh, wait a minute, hold on here, primary, um, a roughly two to one margin. But Duran may push her uh, harder. A representative, Lucy and Clay, he's out of St. Uh, Louis. One was held on the sixty percent of the vote. Uh, while Representative David Scott, he's of Georgia 13, was unopposed, but both will face a challenge as in the majority African American districts. Danny Davis, Chicago South Side, his Illinois 7. Uh, Danny Davis has been around a long time. A couple of uh, long shot of presidential candidates who have been on the throne, on the uh, fr- uh, f- excuse me. Been uh, thrones in 
in uh, the uh, side of uh, the House leadership that is Seth Malton of the, you know, the Commonwealth and Talisi uh, Grebrandt of Hawaii may need uh, to tend to home fires before uh, long shot operations there. Eric uh, Soywell, uh, that's out of uh, California 15, may well run up, uh, run for the House if his own uh, White House thing is not going to turn out to be much. But he's trying to get a little publicity, so give him an A for that. Two Democratic leaders in a safe blue uh, seats, such as uh, Steny Hoyer, he's out of Maryland, five, and Ways and Means Chair Richard Neal, he's out of Mass. One have announced a, uh, have announced a likely uh, challenges. So in the swing district, said Tom Halloran, as uh, a Democrat in Arizona. One and Kurt Schroeder, that's a Democrat in Oregon. Five as well as a rising star, famous uh, Joe Kennedy the third, as in Mass. Uh, four. This is not intended to be a comprehensive list, no doubt about that. But that is the musings of our friends. And let me just make sure uh, we got Andrew Mer- Andrea Merkel. We'll oh, get it right in a minute here. Okay, we don't need to go back there. We're on the wrong screen. That can happen sometimes, even to the best and brightest of us. I guess we'll get uh, our friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Clarence Page of the Chicago Tribune in here. He was writing on the 28th of May. And how is your inner structure week, Mr. President? Ha, 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 ha. Yes, we have another one, but various uh, distractions, many of them flowing uh, from uh, DJ Trump's uh, Twitter feed, have caused the word in a structure week uh, to become a running joke. A running joke because nobody's talking about it. Amongst people who uh, chatter about politics, it draws comparison to Groundhog Day, uh, Lucky and uh, the uh, Lucy, excuse me, in the Peanuts repeatedly switching uh, aside before Charlie Brown tries to kick it. Next week, uh, two years have passed since the Trump administration first announced a week uh, to focus on uh, pursuing a bipartisan deal on a $1 trillion infrastructure program to rebuild bridges, etc., etc. Well, Barack Obama was going to do that, but he was blocked uh, by Republican infrastructure should uh, be a slam dunk, dunk victory. Uh, he's moving a little too fast here. Sorry about that. For the new uh, presidents amongst his many uh, pursuits, is a former real estate de- developer as deeply divided as the party may be on everything else. On that question, the president was offered a lot of enthusiasm, uh, more enthusiasm than detailed, even as the proposal price tag has grown to about uh, two trillion dollars. Well, yes, yeah, a building year and election year. Tough choices uh, will come uh, with the uh, job growth working out. A consensus that gives everybody something to brag about. That's always the deal. Everybody gets a little bit there. Previous distractions, uh, which uh, he uh, couldn't uh, contain himself in uh, in his uh, proposal. The travel ban, uh, mostly on a Muslim country. The fire, of course, of James uh, Comey. Uh, testimony in Capitol Hill. Then came uh, Mueller's news conference uh, yesterday. One, uh, thir- uh, excuse me, Wednesday. Should not forget that one. He was enraged, went into a temper tantrum over uh, Nancy Pelosi, posted a uh, false, uh, slowed down uh, version of her of a speech by Nancy Pelosi. Let me finish up, Mr. Uh, Page here. As long as an impeachment talk ex- excites his base more than infrastructure talk, I uh, I'll be uh, praying, and uh, not only for the president but also for those uh, who uh, have to use the uh, nation's Still crumbling roads and bridges. Good way for Mr. Uh, Page to enter his essay there. Uh, oh, headline out of Chicago. Just looked at Edward uh, Burke. Uh, indicted uh, on expanded uh, federal racketeering and bribery charges. That'll be a big one here. And I guess we should look at it. I'll have to talk to Emma Young about this. Burke... Uh, Powerful alderman there it was uh, one of the chief opponents of the late great Harold Washington. As far as I'm concerned, uh, they can f themselves. Burke told Alderman uh, Daniel uh, Solis, uh, who was uh, working uh, <laughs> on the cover for the FBI, seeking recording. That oh boy. 
Anyway, that shows how they can go down. Sources confirmed Thursday that the uh, friend uh, was a former alderman, uh, Terry Ga- uh, Ga- Ga- Gabinski, a protege of the late Dan Rosinkowski, who was sworn as an alderman on the same day as Burke in 1969. In an interview uh, with the uh, Chicago Tribune after the indictment was announced, the mayor, uh, Laurie Lightfoot, in her uh, second full week called uh, for Burke uh, to resign, saying that, in her opinion, as a former federal prosecutor, the case against him is strong. He used the levers of government to uh, enrich himself, Lightfoot said, and as you can see in reading the indictment, he was essentially calling up and uh, muscling uh, commissions, uh, lining people and everything else in between uh, to get uh, his away in order to... Uh, Ingratiate, ingratiate himself with a potential paying client for his legal business. Oh, he's a lawyer. Well, I'll get the spar too. The indictment reveals for the first time some of the secret recordings made by Solis, uh, a longtime Burke ally who began cooperating in uh, 2016 after he himself was secretly recorded. Oh, but a den of fees. Well, the old recording gets them all. Four, year, four months later, uh, Burke was again... Uh, Recorded asking a solace uh, about the developers, uh, developments, developers, excuse me. So, uh, did we land on, uh, anyway, he said that solace in, uh, that was in uh, 2017, according to the indictment. He also lamented the uh, post office developer would uh, only work with uh, Jewish lawyers to appeal their property taxes unless they could uh, have special assistance of uh, the indicted figure alleged also charged for the first time was Peter J. Uh, Andrews a longtime political operative in uh, the 14th Ward that's where Burke was there he was accused of assisting the Alderman attempting to shake down two businessmen seeking to renovate a Burger King restaurant in the Ward oh boy anyway old Burke is 75 Andrews is 69 they'll be arraigned uh Tuesday before uh, U.S. Judge Robert Dow. Burke, uh, for decades, uh, had his hands on many of the city's power uh, levers, no doubt about that, and had first been charged in January one count of attempted uh, extortion as the Burger King affair. He probably should have been eating at McDonald's. Uh, the FBI uh, listed as many as... Uh, 9,475 wiretap uh, calls that were made or received oh boy, over at least uh, on Burke's phone. Over uh, Burke was doing a lot of phoning over an eight-month period. That tells you to stay off the uh, phones. The complaint also alleged that Burke uh, pressured one of uh, the company's executives in uh, December of 2017 to contribute to the campaign of an unnamed local politician. So I identified that as poor old, uh, poor Prickwinkle. Huh, poor Prickwinkle, who lost her bid, no doubt about that. She lost it big time earlier this year, and wide margins are there. Tony Pricknickle, uh, well, she's still chair of the county board. Burke, who won a, a re-election to a 13th for a full term in uh, February, despite the clouds over his head, is free on a uh, ten thousand dollar bond. Ten thousand dollar bond. Only put up a thousand dollars. Meanwhile, ongoing investigation conti- <coughs> Excuse me. Continue to sh- to uh, send a shockwaves through uh, Chicago. No doubt about that. Former Alderman Joe Moore, who lost his uh, seat, he held uh, for uh, twenty eight years. Said that the indictments and surrounding controversy gave light foot and upper hand against the city council. Well, now. No doubt about that. They're in deep, deep over there. New political dy- dynamic was evident at the Wednesday council meeting. Lightfoot presided for the first time as mayor. Silas Burke uh, doing a uh, tense exchange over Burke's objection to some language in Lightfoot's proposed package of council rules. She quickly cut him off when Burke had tried to make another point. She stopped him short. Alderman, please, Alderman, I will call you when I'm ready to hear from you. In the interview uh, with uh, the Tribune, Lightfoot said Burke's alleged conduct showed how the city council desperately needed to uh, reform how business is conducted. This is why one should be able to amass 
the uh, kind of power, and this is why the automatic uh, power is uh, corrosive and corrupting. Cloud on certainty, rumors, and windows undermine the integrity of government, the mayor said in uh, charging Burka with racketeering counts, which are typically reserved for mobsters and gangsters. Well, they can be uh, there, and there's also a civil uh, racketeering uh, lawsuit can be uh, set, and that could turn to be criminal. Anyway, while previous charges involving relatively small developments, Burke is now accused of of corrupting one of the largest projects in Chicago history, more than $800 million renovation of 2.8 million square foot building that saddles the Eisenhower Express uh, Way and 400, uh, 433 West Van Buren Street, right downtown. The indictment makes clear that Burke uh, saw uh, the company as a potential gold mine for his law firm, which he won't be in very long. The next day, the Park District approved a uh, $2 person hike in the entrance fee uh, for the field. And let me see. Uh, Gabrinsky's uh, daughter uh, declined a full time job, according to the indictment. At Burke's direction, his assistant then sent an email uh, to Field's uh, field executive for additional dis- uh, details about uh, Gabrinsky's uh, daughter, uh, how she could apply for the post, according to the charge. Last three days, the executive owed oh, the Field Museum. Emailed uh, Burke off in uh, begin, uh, Gabinsky's uh, daughter a full-time job, as according to the indictment. Anyway. From the city of Chicago, we go merely, merely along here. And let me see what we can pick up here. We got that done. We've already taken care of Roy Moore. Yeah, the infamous thing here, I mean, we reported this, the hiding of the uh, SS John McCain. It was in the harbor at, you know, why DJ Trump wanted to literally hide history. I guess if if you can't uh, destroy history, you start out to hide history. Let's go to Miami Herald. We go around and around here. See if we can uh, pick up anything uh, here. Hmm. Ah, uh, let's see. Here's a good question here. I think we'll look at this. Why did uh, the Fed subpoena information in Andrew Gillum? Remember Andrew Gillum and his uh, campaign for governor? Andrew Gillum is a focal uh, point in a recent issue to a federal grand jury subpoena that demanded information on the former Democratic candidate for governor, his campaign, his political committee, a wealthy a donor, a charity uh, he worked for and a former employee. The subpoena obtained, this is by the Tampa Bay Times in Tampa Bay, could uh, reflect a, a new level of a federal uh, inquiry to Gillum, the former uh, oh former mayor of Tallahassee who narrowly lost to the governor. I didn't know his term had expired there. Throughout the campaign last year, Gillum uh, insisted that he was not the target of the FBI investigation. But the most recent one does. Uh, presumably the investigation has centered on a corruption inside a Tallahassee government, uh, doing, uh, including during Gillum's uh, time as mayor. The new subpoena is uh, more focused on Gillum's uh, 2018 campaign. People and organizations with clear ties to him, but with less obvious connections to the city hall. Now he's a contributor, Gillum is, at CNN. That's where they all go. In a statement uh, to the Times, Gillum said, we are ready to assist... Uh, any uh, further review of our work because I'm confident that we will always do the right thing. We ran an open and honest uh, campaign as a policy. The U.S. Attorney Office doesn't really uh, talk about people. The subpoena demands information on John H. Jackson, the president and CEO of uh, the Schultz Foundation for Public Education. Don uh, Sussman, an investor and philanthropist who donated $1.5 million to uh, Gillum's uh, bid for governor. And Harris Purnell, that's somebody that worked for Sussman. Sharon uh, Letterman Hicks, a longtime friend and advisor to Gillum, who is uh, currently the CEO of the National uh, Black Justice Commission, a uh, black uh, LGBT advocacy group. 
Little has been forwarded about Gillen's work uh, for the uh, School Foundation for Public Education. It is a well-regarded charity that focuses on racial and economic justice through education uh, equality. Gillen, who campaigned on platform of raising uh, salaries, Jackson, uh, it is uh, its uh, president, is a former national director of education and chief policy officer for the NAACP. And let me finish this up here. Just things we run into is we uh, sought to make this program more live and spontaneous. Gillum has started to move uh, from uh, from the cloud of the investigation and get on with his political career, though his political career forward uh, Florida is a leading an effort to uh, recruit uh, one million more Democrats to vote in uh, 2020. So that's where Mr. Andrew Gillum is. We'll continue to follow the story of Mr. Gillum. Let's go real quickly to the Washington Post and then we'll do the sports. And on uh, uh, here's a, a note here on DJ. Uh, U.S. will sl- slap uh, 5% tariff on Mexican imports over the immigration uh, uh, program. Uh, threats of a Mexican tariffs could uh, wreck the trade deal and undercut the economy, no doubt about that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And also in the post, uh, McCain's warship, uh, Behemoth, raises questions about whether... Uh, Trump has uh, politicized the military. Very important situation. And tomorrow night on uh, the, uh, or tomorrow morning, uh, Saturday morning, on uh, the week that was, we'll talk about uh, DJ Trump's attempt uh, to uh, bring the military uh, in the police uh, situation, domestic police. Military is uh, forbidden by posse comitatus of uh, doing that particular situation can't do it. Another headline, Nancy Pelosi is reluctant to impeach old DJ Trump. And let's see, anything else? Uh, the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra canceled its uh, summer uh, uh, situation here. And also the Raptors beat the Warriors. Uh, the old Raptors have beat the Warriors. Anyway, we'll do that in a uh, sports and somewhere here we have e, uh, E.J. Dion. Let's get the National Spelling Bee and then we'll go to one of our favorite. Uh, as a child, we, uh, being traditionally not a very good speller, decided to study for the National uh, Spelling Bee. Anyway, the uh, eight finalists, uh, best out, 557 of the contestants, ranging from 7 to 14 in Thursday's uh, primetime final. The results is the first time more than uh, two uh, co-champs were named and came as the spelling bees increased competition. Uh, the winners were... Uh, oh, boy. Somebody by the name of Grant Hardy. Uh, Grant... Yeah, Grant Hasry. 13 of California, Eric... Uh, Howard, uh, fourth team of Alabama. Sudar, uh, show whip, Sudar, 13 of Maryland. And another one, uh, Pahi, uh, 13 uh, there. And I won't try to pronounce the first name of New Jersey. And Soham, 13 of Texas. We'll leave it at that. Boy, a lot of people here, uh, Codelli, uh, 12 of Texas. Stephen uh, Sarro, uh, 13 of Jersey. And another uh, Raja, Rafan Raja, uh, Raji Raja, 13 of Texas. The spelling bee is uh, taking place at the National, uh, Gaylord National Result in uh, National Harbor, uh, Maryland. And what else do we have here? The event uh, had uh, been ultra competitive, but partly due to a cottage in- industry's build up, uh, increasingly furious uh, world competition, spelling bees, controversial new uh, invitation process, uh, letting spellers bypass traditional paths to national event. What the uh, spelling bee, this is uh, by Shaka. 
Sheik Bani Shaka, author of uh, Beeline, What the Spelling Bee Reveals About Generation Z, New Path to Success. Every year uh, ramps up and gets harder, she says. The semifinals were uh, scheduled to end uh, by uh, 2 p.m., but contestants uh, proved to be more resilient than ever. By 3 p.m., the bees organized as a result of what uh, Shakan called a lawnmower round, extremely hard words intended to <laughs> uh, with the uh, remaining a feel. It uh, worked with spellers knocked out uh, by head-spinning words such as, and I can't even pronounce the word, Such as uh, Wintanium. Co. Uh, Ginny. And. Your truck. Oh, uh, this is spelled uh, Y E R T C H U K. Were vanished to the likes of, boy, Ferroloni. Advanced there. Anyway, already a. Uh, a four-year veteran of the field, this was Mr. Uh, Sudar, 13, uh, made the final cut when he was asked a uh, physically taxing first half of the day. Uh, hmm. I was very tired. I, was all, I uh, also did not drink a lot of water. He's from Clarksville, Maryland. Yeah, I'm trying to find out what the winning word was here. <laughs> um... Another game challenge event is the, initi- is the initial program known as RSVB. Now in the second year, in the past, spellers reached the national event only by winning regional Bs and securing a sponsor off in a newspaper. But with the advanced RVSB, which uh, uh, supplied the 292 this year uh, of the 565 contestants, they could afford the fifteen hundred dollar entry plus uh, six nights at the three hundred dollar night Gaylord Place. Gee. Anyway, so maybe it's not sponsored by anyone. Uh, Scott uh, Rima, a New York-based uh, tutor and author of Spelling Bee's textbook, uh, coached three of the sixteen contestants. He said, "Winning the B uh, takes more than." Uh, wrote memorization his uh, students study words roots and that's the way you actually do it and how to spell sounds from Latin Greek German Japanese and other languages a good uh, speller knows a lot of words uh, Rima uh, said that's R-E-M-E-R a great speller's ability to spell uh, pretty much any word uh, you throw at them because they're able to use the process to break the word down and come up with a very well educated guess and that's what I was doing back there and I don't know if my Latin helped me very much at all and uh, that's just said how they uh, do it uh, it is challenging no doubt about that uh, let me just look at one of these words here I had to bring Bill Clinton on he's very good at this kind of stuff um Uh, this is a psycho- uh, who distinguishes uh, psychology as a science from philosophy and a biologist. This is a person here, Womet. Uh, no, it's not it. Mm. All right, we'll go to the old. Ah, it's the wrong dictionary. Sorry about that. That's one of the things. If I recall correctly, we used to just study dictionaries. Now it's uh, much more. Profound than that, and if I, I don't have time to get the Oxford out here. I was trying to see if we could. Mm. Well, I'm not sure if this will do me much good at all, and it's not going to do me. With Median. Uh, anyway, it's referring to his brand of psychiatry. German word. Well, anyway, that's so much uh, for them. Uh, how to pronounce it? I'm not sure. Wanchen. Oh, well. Wanchen. Wanchen. 
I suppose it pronounced for you, but is German. One shun. So much for the National Spelling Bee. Let's go to sports now. We have made a fool of ourselves long enough. <laughs> and sometimes a little bit of humor is good. Let's do the thing of the humor. Yeah, let's see. Where are we? Eh, we don't have time for... We'll catch uh, Amy later here. And, oops. No. We'll do a program on the Bruins and on the... Uh, St. Louis Blues. And right now we're trying our best to find our coverage that we kind of lost here somewhere. This is what happens when you're covering a number of things. And I think what we're going to have to do is... Yeah, we are going to have to do this. Anyway, we'll do the sports here now. Editing will solve some of our problems here. We'll go to ESPN. We hope. We will. And uh, we'll uh, pull the latest and greatest from them. In uh, I think we announced earlier the Raptors won 18 to 109 over the Golden State Warriors, and they take the series one nothing. Was played in uh, Toronto, and uh, let's see uh, here the uh, college uh, softball uh, tournament uh, here. Arizona three to one over Washington, um, UCLA seven to two over uh, Minnesota, and Oklahoma State two to one over Florida, and Oklahoma three to two over Alabama. And uh, Serena cruises past uh, Nara uh, in uh, straight sets. Uh, that's the French Open. There and uh, Tiger, where's old Tiger? Tiger finished two under in the first round of the Memorial. There uh, and the usual suspects are out there. And let us go to Major League Baseball and get the scores from last night. We hope. Nonetheless, Cardinals five to three over the Phillies in a Philadelphia. Giants three to one over the Mariners in a Florida. And in ten. The Rockies beat the Denba- <laughs> the uh, Diamondbacks in uh, Denver 11 to 10. The Brewers have 11 to 5 over the Pirates in Pittsburgh. The Twins were beaten by the Rays in Tampa 14 to 3. The Royals are 4 to 2 over the Rangers in uh, Texas. Cleveland on the south side of Chicago, White Sox 10 to 4. Dodgers in Los Angeles uh, shut out the Mets 2-zip. Dodgers have been having have one hell of a season. The Angels 9-3 uh, nine, nine over the Mariners in uh, Seattle. They had 15 hits, one error. The Angels and uh, the Mariners, uh, four hits and one error there. It was slugfest. And Boston and the Yankees were postponed because of rain, which is uh, one of the things uh, to get a postponement. Let me just look quickly at the Stanley Cup. The Blues, of course, cap game uh, two in overtime. That's the big headline here. They were playing uh, in uh, Boston. I believe now, we don't need to hear it, it will shift uh, to uh, St. Louis with a win uh, more than a half century in the making. The Blues defeated the uh, Boston Bruins a 3-2 to two in overtime to take game two. The franchise first uh, victory in... Uh, Hmm. A Stanley Club, Stanley Cup uh, final game. A finals game. I'm sorry, not the final game. Anyway, uh, last night, yeah, old Charlie Coyle was there. He scored first hometown favorite on a power play from uh, Robert uh, uh, Brotarzo. Not for me with the lineup. I'm sorry about that. Uh Tied it. Uh, fourth liner uh, Jackie uh, Nordstrom uh, gave uh, the Boston another lead. And Vladimir uh, Tedrinsko uh, evened things up again. Uh, then things uh, calmed down on 
offensively in uh, the second and third, uh, especially for the Bruins, who had a hard time sustaining any offensive uh, zone uh, presence. The uh, Bruins have played uh, the most of the game uh, with a defensive man, uh, Matt uh, Guzelik, being sent to the hospital. He hit the boards uh, face first, uh, checked by Okar uh, Sanquinas. Sanquis. I'll have to get these names down. Anyway, some of what the stars were uh, for St. Louis there, uh, Carl... Uh, Grimeyerson for the St. Louis uh, Blues here and Nordstrom uh, for the uh, for the Bruins and again for St. Louis here Vladimir uh, uh, Terz- uh, Terzerkov uh, for St. Louis anyway that is the National Hockey League and let's uh, I get Oh, we've got the NBA. Sorry about that. We'll see uh, soccer. Uh, we're now going to specialize more in... Uh, well, we'll get this. And I don't want to try to... I always have a problem with this name here. Mozambique uh, and Malawi. Uh, Malawi, excuse me. 1-1. One, one. That is... Uh, there, that's the international uh, friendly. And Namibia 3 to zip. Uh, there over... Uh, Shekely, Shekely, Turkey two to one over Greece, and Germany uh, shut out Chile to zip. Linz uh, one one and uh, Dijon. And let's see, Lars, uh, Lara, um, and uh, well, they were shut out anyway by Corimbians. Who they are? And the Argen, uh, Argentamos Juniors, uh, they were zip, zip, zero, zero. Anyway, see if we can find somebody we know who they are. <laughs> Norway, 12 to uh, zip over Honduras. Uh, and New Zealand, uh, and Uruguay was two in the U-20. Nigeria and Ukraine, one, one. And U.S. won over uh, Qatar. I didn't know they were in hockey. Uh, and football. Well, football is very large uh, worldwide, so there we go. Anyway, that'll do it uh, for football. That will do it for us. We'll see you on the Monday morning uh, quarterback. Uh, on to Mr. Redbone. Take us out of here. The late uh, Mr. Uh, Redbone uh, in was by himself. Good day and have a good weekend. We'll talk to you on uh, the week that was on Saturday morning as normal.
Chow.